Greetings folks, this is the Bixler 3 from the Hobby King Summer Sale. It's the ready to fly version, no it's not, it's the plug and play version uh, and it was on sale for a ridiculous price so I couldn't resist. Uh, now I have a Bixler 1 slope sawer, a Bixler 2 um, motor glider and a Bixler 3 motor glider so be keen to compare how this flies compared to the Bixler 2. My flying buddy Michael says that um, he doesn't think the Bixler 3 flies as well as the Bixler 2, so I'll be interested to find out. One thing I've noticed, the control surfaces are bigger than the Bixler 2, and I like big control surfaces. I've got these sort of hard angles here on the um, tips and on the uh, tail plane, uh, more of a styling thing than a functional thing I would imagine. I don't know if I like that all that much. Decals, I don't mind these decals actually. I, I quite like the orange and blue and grey colour scheme. Uh, but I'm sure I'll change that eventually. So, wings look good. Uh, fuselage is good. Uh, it's got a nice big hatch here. This is great. Uh, that's one of the problems with the other one. It's a bit hard to get sort of stuff in and uh, you've got much better access there. A bit windy today. We've got a storm warning, so everything's going to be creaking and carrying on. Uh, we have a little removable nose where you can put a camera in the nose. I think that might be stuck on actually. Apparently, you can move that, remove that little nose there, and have an FPV camera there. The wing mounts on top. Quick release bolts, I believe. I noticed this section around here, around the motor, there's not very, very much foam at all in there and we've got these sort of cooling holes or whatever they are as well. So that whole area is fairly weak. Uh, could do with some reinforcement I think. Steerable tail wheel, bit of fun but I usually take the wheels off. But I'll, I'll start off flying this absolutely stock as is so I can get a good assessment. Uh, we also provide a little FPV mounting canopy as well. Convenient spot to mount transmitters, cameras and things like that. That's quite nice. 20 amp ESC. Little motor which I believe would be easy to uh, pull out and upgrade. So I'll probably do that later on but not straight, not straight off I don't think. 8 by 4 inch prop little spar, little uh, plastic skid to go on the bottom, some pieces of velcro, uh, wire lead, wing bolts, control horns, spinner, wheel pants, is, no, <laughs> I'm not going to wear the, use the wheel pants, they're pointless I think, get rid of them. First thing to do is glue the tail plane together, vertical stab onto the horizontal stab, be a good idea to uh, roughen up these surfaces, they feel a bit sort of slick and slippery as if there's some mould release on them. Oh, you've got a nice big full size rudder, which is great. We have the provision for flap servos there. Um, there's the flaps, there's the aileron. Bit of an under cambered uh, airfoil too. That's interesting. With the flaps, I don't think flaps are necessary for a plane this size or this style. All I'm going to do is tape the two together so we have full span ailerons. As they are, the flaps are kind of flapping free. They're sort of joined a little bit there. They're going to flap around in the wind. So I'm just going to slice down there and tape the flaps and ailerons together. So this all just glues on. Okay, it's going to be hot glue. Fuselage is quite stiff. We've got a spar, carbon fibre spar running down in there, I think. You also have carbon fibre strips on either side in the fuselage there, which is a good idea. So I'm just going to roughen up these gluing surfaces to make sure they're going to stick all right. Just a little bit of sandpaper. That'll take off any mould release and just give more for the glue to key into. Cool, I've got this little battery operated uh, glue gun too, which is uh, very nice. Seems like I'm doing a, an ad for Hobby King, but I'm not. <laughs> Don't overdo it. They key in very nicely, so they're going to sit 
vertically without any problems. Glue everywhere, squeeze it down, wipe it off. It's looking good. Can't go too far wrong. So what I can do now is connect up the push rods. That's interesting. Oh no, that goes over the top. I shall center up the servos. Little servo tester with a battery. Good idea to have one of them always handy. So that's the rudder. Center it. Okay, I've got a little bit of flexible fuel line here. Just cut off a few little uh, safety bands so that the clevis connectors don't come undone. There we go. That's that's beautiful. The steering wheel here. We've got a little adjustable collar here that uh, we can line up the rudder and the wheel if they're out of alignment, which I think they are a little bit. The hinges and the control horns are fine. Um, nice and flexible. Eventually they're going to wear out and I'll just repair them with tape when that happens. Control horns are fine. If you're being pedantic you might sort of strengthen them up with a little bit of ID card plastic or something like that, but I'll leave them as they are for the moment. Now just adjust it to the right length so that the elevator lines up with the horizontal stabiliser. I'm just putting them in the outer hole for the moment. If I need more travel I'll move it inwards. There we go. Bands on. That's plenty of throw, I think. Just by gut feel. Now I'm going to deal with the flap hinges. We get a little box of plastic hinges, which are very, very nice. I like these hinges. And we need to glue them in there. We also need to free up this little bit of foam here. One of the flap hinges is under this uh, decal here, so I just need to, without making it too, look too ugly, just scrape that off. Now I'm going to use some quick grip or rubbery cement. Squirt a bit of that in there and just push the hinges into the preformed slots. Same with the others. So there we have some hinges in the flap and I'm just going to tape those flaps together using some of this fibre reinforced tape this stuff sticks like crazy and we also have this funny little bit of foam here to protect the control horn I guess and I'm going to put my little safety band on it's easier when you can get the whole push rod out because you can just slip it on the other end. Center up the servo with my servo tester. That's pretty good. That'll be the spot. Then we slide the little safety catch over. Done. Putting the wing together now. I've got two servo wires. You just need to free them up from where they have been stored. Uh, we have the spar, put the spar in, mating spar on the other side, a couple of little guide uh, carbon fibre strips there that are also strengthening down the wing, and we've got a little retaining clip here. Now this little square piece slides in here and you push that down and it holds it together. There we go, so that wing won't come apart now, that's, that's brilliant. So, servo wires have to pass through. You could either use the little Y cable that they've provided here, or I prefer to have separate cables for each aileron. And that just gives you uh, more options with programming. You can program in camber, reflex, flapper ons, things like that. So two short leads, make sure they're connected around the correct way. I'll pass them down through. 
done. All right, so the wing, there's a little latch here that hooks underneath that mounting point there. Keyed wing mounting bolts. Push and twist. And then the wing's mounted. That's brilliant, I really like that. Quick release wing, excellent. I just noticed with the motor, the shaft has been turned down to be thinner than standard, which uh, I don't know why they do that. They did it in the other Bixler as well. It just means that you can't buy a easily available standard uh, collet for it. Stupid, just making it exclusive for some reason. Yes, we need to put one of these little adapters in here. Find the right one. That's the one. Numbers need to be facing forward. There are the numbers. That's facing forward. There we go. Tighten up the collet. They put the landing gear in too. That just slots in there, I believe. Right, so pull it in and it fits in there. All right, all connected up. Pop that in for the moment. Just check the center of gravity. That's just behind the, on the backage of that spar. Ailerons are good. Elevator and rudder. well balanced too. It's a bit of a whistly motor. Same as the other Bixler. Uh, what I should do is calibrate the ESC properly. Check the CG. 334 millimetres plus or minus 10 from the nose. Which is right on the back of that spar. We're ready to go.